Steve here. Uh, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be sticking with the theme of 3D printed injection molds for soft plastics like I did in the last one. But in this video, I am going to try to push the limits and see what's possible with 3D printing. The first thing I'm going to try to do is a wavy split line and see if that's possible. And the second thing I'm going to do is a four piece mold. So uh, let's jump into the CAD and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. All right, this is the bait I'm going to try to make. It's a modified version of the Reaper lure I made a few videos ago in the 3D printed open pour mold. Uh, this one's actually modeled after a cuttlefish. And if you don't know what a cuttlefish is, this is what it looks like. It has a fin that runs its entire length of its body and it kind of waves as it swims along. So that's the action I'm going to try to get out of this lure. I don't know if that's going to be possible, but... That's what I'm going for, but basically this uh, video is just to test out the theory of the mold and using a wavy split line, so let me show you what that mold looks like. So this is what the finished mold is going to look like. It is going to have this wavy split line, and that's what I'm going to be testing out. So I'm not going to get into the full design of this, but I will give you a quick rundown of how I did this. Okay, once I got this bait made the way I wanted it, I went back and I created another sketch and it just encloses the bait completely and I extruded out two boxes. These two boxes are going to be the top and bottom of the actual mold. So once I got those extruded, I went back and I did another sketch. And this sketch actually just follows what will be the wavy pattern of the fin of the bait. Uh, I actually did two. We did a top and a bottom. And then once those were done, using those sketches, I extrude cut and I created the top and bottom. And once that was done, I just, uh, I used the combine tool and I actually removed the bait from both molds. It did leave a couple of weird things in here because the split line didn't actually cut completely through the bait evenly, but... That was easy enough to just go back and delete, and I did the same thing for the bottom. So there you see the, the bottom. And once that was done, I just uh, basically went through, added my pins, my sprue, and that's that. Let me uh, turn off the... Let me make this a little transparent. And there you can see the cavity that's going to be formed by the mold. And I can throw the bait back in there, and you can see that too. This is going to be the mold for the wavy split line. Uh, for the four-piece mold, I did that in another program, so let's jump over to that. Okay, for the four-piece mold, I am going to be trying to make this four-tail grub. I don't know if a four-tail grub has ever been made before. I've seen a two-tail grub, but never four, and there might be reasons for that. But that's what we're here to find out, so we're going to give it a shot. I'm not going to go into the whole design of this either, but basically I, I started with four even boxes. I cut the grub out of that, and then I added some uh, holes, some pins, the sprue, and you can see uh, each piece has a hole and a pin. So basically, I just connect two halves, connect the other two halves, and then they connect together, and that forms the whole mold. Pretty simple. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm going to go get these printed up. It's probably going to take a little bit, so through the magic editing, once we come back, I'm going to be ready to inject, so let me go do that. All right, we're back. It's been about a week, as you can see. I got all the pieces and parts printed. Uh, this is the first uh, wavy split line mold. I'm calling this one the Cuttlefish, after what it was modeled after. I printed at a 10 layer height. It does have some a uh, little bit of stepping. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not bad. But when it is together, that uh, split line... Looks pretty solid. I don't think there'll be too much flashing, but we'll see what happens. And then this is the four piece mold for the four tail grub. These took about six hours to print each, so that's about 24 hours of print right there. But basically, uh, you got the pins on one side, holes on the other. It just goes together two halves at a time. And then those two halves go together. This one, probably get a little bit flashing just because the lines aren't as tight as I was hoping, but we'll see how that clamps up. But I'm going to mix up some plastic, and we're going to see what happens here. For the plastic, I am just going to be using Dead-On Swimbait Jerkbait Blend. Uh, I'm going to use my standard purple color that I have and my uh, little uh, multicolored flake. I kind of like the purple color. You can't go wrong with purple when it comes to soft plastic. So let me get that heated up, and we'll uh, see how this works. All right, one other thing I should show you before I start is I made another injector. This is just a little... Uh, three to four ounce one, I believe. Here it is compared to my original one. 
construction was the same piece of plumbing pipe machined end i actually did a 3d printed end that just screws onto the pipe same thing handle this is just a little stop keeps me from pushing the end out because i didn't put a, a lock on that one also keeps it from uh, rolling off my bench and when i want to remove the end it just pops off and i can pull that out pretty simple but all right let me get to the plastic and we'll start some injections Okay, well my plastic's heating up. I got this uh, mold clamped up with these woodworking clamps. I'm hoping this uh, clamps enough force along the entire length of the seam to seal it up and uh, keep everything warping. I did just notice how I didn't notice this before, I have no idea, but I must have unsuppressed one of the features when I was screwing around with the video because I uh, don't have a chamfer on one half of this mold where the sprue is, but it's still gonna work, it's not a big deal, but we'll see what happens. Give this final stir. I like to heat it up to at least 350, but then let it cool down a bit, maybe 300, just so it doesn't uh, melt the PLA at all. So we'll give that a sec. Stir it around, let some of the heat out. It's not too bad. All right, let's see what happens here. Gonna slowly inject that in and hold a little pressure. Not too much because I don't want to blow the mold out. Top it off. Alright, gonna let that cool down as always and uh, hope for the best. Alright, we're back. Let's see how this uh, came out. Moment of truth. Molds always stick together the first time. Wow, that actually worked. That worked really well. Check that out. Man, that came out pretty good. A little bit of tiny little bit of flashing, but man, not bad for a 3D printed mold. Especially with that wavy split line. All right, I'm going to do a couple more and uh, then we'll move along. Okay, I did notice after that first injection, I did have a little bit of a problem with the mold. This half is perfect, nothing wrong with that one. But on this half, I did get a little bit of blow through on that runner part of the sprue. May have just been a little bit too much pressure, but effectively it probably filled this half of the mold with uh, a little bit of plastisol because these are printed at 25%. And you can see it melted the backside where I had that little clamp up at the top. I think it would be a good idea to just run a plywood backer on both sides of this to have full pressure over the whole thing. But I think I know what the issue is, so let me jump into Simplified 3D and show you where I screwed up the settings. All right, here we are in Simplified 3D, and this is what the slice mold would look like. Uh, normally for print settings, I use a 25% infill with four to six uh, perimeter outlines and six top layers, I believe. Let me uh, back this down a bit so you can see the infill. And here you can see the four uh, perimeter outlines. And I'm using a four, uh, 040 nozzle, so that's a little over a millimeter and a half at four outlines. And if I turn the cross section on, you can see uh, six top layers and this is where the problem is because at 0.10 millimeters that's barely over a half a millimeter so what I think I need to do from now on is increase this to at least 15 top layers. Alright this is what it would look like with four outlines and 15 top layers. This would effectively give me a millimeter and a half of solid plastic around the whole perimeter of the bait. Even going back into the back side of the bait everything is pretty solid as you can see so I think in uh, Future molds, this is what I'm going to run with for settings. It'll increase the print times a little bit, but it'll make for a stronger mold that'll probably last a little bit longer. And with that, uh, let's get back into making some baits. All right, even with that one little issue with the mold, I ended up pouring another five of these. Did a couple more purples and some green ones, and they all came out pretty well. I didn't have any other problems. Just had a little bit of flashing on the edges here, but that's to be expected. 
Uh, I think before I go any farther making any more of these, I am going to test them out. That might just be in the bathtub because everything's kind of frozen over right now, but we do what we got to do. But uh, I think for now, I'm going to jump into that four cavity mold and shoot some of those and see what happens with that. So let's go do that. All right, well, my plastic is heating up again. I got this clamped as best as I can figure out how. Again, I just got the three wood clamps on there, trying to apply pressure from uh, all sides. I'll be surprised if this actually works, but uh, let's see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. If I can do this without blowing it out. Really doesn't take that much material for one grub. All right, just gotta wait for that to cool again. All right, here we go. Place your bets. Did this work or not? Let's see if I get this part without destroying the bait. Oh my God, this might have actually worked. Would you look at that? This definitely opens up some possibilities. Flashing wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be either. Just a little bit right there. Whack that off of there. Look at that thing. That's a work of beauty. Work of art. I don't know. Take your pick. Let's do some more. Here we go. Round two. Remember, kids, safety first. Let's see how round two came out. Came out just good, if not better, I think. Still a little bit of flashing. Wow, these are fun. All right, I'm gonna do a few more off camera and then we'll be back. Kerplunk. All right, so here's the finished baits. Again, I did uh, three green, three purple. The molds uh, worked surprisingly well. I thought there was gonna be a hell of a lot more flashing than that. Can't believe all those uh, split lines uh, work that well. Again, these uh, printed with this side up so you can start, you can actually see the infill underneath that because, again, it's all that settings issue, but we're going to fix that for the next time. It kind of left a cool uh, cool pattern on the bait on some of these uh, tails. Can't really see it in the this kind of lighting, but there you go. Overall, I am very uh, satisfied how this came out, and this uh, four-piece mold setup might lead to some interesting baits. I got one of these rigged up, so we're going to get this in the water, and in, and by in the water, I mean the bathtub. So I'm going to go do that, and uh, we'll go from there, and we'll see what happens. Here we are in the test tank, or test tub, I should say, testing out the Cuttlefish Reaper. And while it doesn't have a perfect action like that video I showed, it does have a little tail flutter. It clearly doesn't show up in this video that well because I'm using a knockoff GoPro, which is uh, has some pretty crappy quality. But overall, I am happy with how this turned out, and I think it will catch some fish. Uh, we're going to find out this spring. But for now, uh, let's go check out that four-tailed grub next. So here we have the action of the four-tailed grub, and... I am extremely pleased with how this works. Those little legs uh, got some serious action to them. It kind of reminds me of the Sentinels from the Matrix movie. Uh, again, this video doesn't really show it that well, but in person, this thing is uh, crazy looking. I love how this came out. This thing is definitely going to catch some fish. I have no doubts about that. I 
I stuck my iPhone in one of those waterproof pouches to try to get some slow-mo video of this. And, well, it's uh, wicked grainy. Uh, I think it gives you a little bit better sense of the action. It definitely has some uh, cool swimming action to it, as you can see. We'll have to see what the fish think about it, but uh, Neobass better watch out because the sentinel grub is coming for him. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video for now, but in conclusion, uh, these molds worked a lot better than I thought they were going to. And while this video was just to test out these molds, I actually turned out some pretty cool baits, so that's a win in my book. And between that uh, crazy split line and the multiple split lines of that four-piece mold, uh, this could lead to some uh, crazy looking baits in the future. I don't have anything cooking right now, but my brain's always working still. So you never know what you're going to see. But as always, I just want to say thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.